Welcome to Whitestone Missionary Baptist Church, 187 South Parkway East in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, we want to thank all our members from California to Philadelphia, down in Florida. I won't go through all the names of the states, Mississippi, Tennessee, Arkansas, and uh, other places, and Bangkok, Thailand, where Brother Kirk Bays is, who is an honorary deacon here at Whitestone Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, special prayers and thoughts go out to uh, Bill Gorman, Elaine, Renee James, Charles Dawson Jr., Tommy Jones, uh, Mrs. W.C. Gordon, Leonard Hunt, uh, also um, Francis Baskin, Mikhail Brider, and the Eddings family, and the Truett family. Uh, Dorothy Williams, Helen Vernon, who has a birthday today. She's tuned in right now. Uh, Ruby Brider and the Brider family. Uh, the Crenshaw family, Lisa Robinson, Melissa Robinson, Ebony Smith, uh, Ruth Hobbs, uh, the Cobbs family, Sylvia Ray, Bobby Yancey, Carmen Gardner, also, uh, Keith Miller, Tasha Green, Earl Glass, Marquita Fletcher, the Atkinson family, Reverend Charles Peppers, Reverend Robert King, also Andy and Melanie Swims, Victor and Marilyn Turner, uh, Kim Leonard, Melissa Owens, Perlene Washington, uh, Cheeks and Underwood family, uh, the Boyd family, uh, Preston Simmons and the Simmons family, Robbie Belcher, Kip Carver and Hamilton High School, uh, Miles Williams, Douglas Baskin, Michelle McGee, the Crawford family, Diane Brown, uh, Rudy Smith, Benny Neal, Patsy Britt, also, Corrine Turner, Penny McIntyre, Lula Johnson, John and Pat Tyler, Betty Jean Burns, Brian Burns, Louis, uh, Joyce Hawkins, Joyce Ann Stewart, Edith Short, Felicia McDonald, Adrian Henderson, Sheila Anderson, May McGee, Miriam and Trey Morgan, Vernon Harris Jr. and Sr., Mallory Catlett, uh, Bill Kennedy, uh, Bianca Johnson, Isaac Carey, Angela Long, Selena Williams, Beatrice Matthews, Billy Moore, Robert Sims, Dolores Rose, Jim Lee and Katie Grimes, Walter and Chris Carson, Carl and Willie Mae Brumley, Jackie Amber, John and Amos Chase, Terrence Davis, Willie B. Hanna, Marion Haynes, Sam Ely, Victoria Gillard, Ellen Cooper, Jamie Swan, Brenda Winfield, Sylvester Hudson, Andrew Salisbury, James Brown, uh, Barbara Irvin, Cleveland Hill, Ron Lane, Edward Henderson, Ruth and Robert Love, Elsie and Evelyn Smith, Leah Skye, Larry Logan and Reba Walker, Lee Ray, Walker as well, Tamika and Helen Wright, Maurice and Helen Vernon, um, including her husband this time, uh, Tamika Sutton, Latoya McKinney, Eartha Faye Logan, uh, Marilyn Jones, Marcus Andrews, uh, Jan Janelle Wright, Hazel Mason, Lonnie Shasta and Nikki Coleman, Sharon Evans, Richard Wilkerson, Mary Ann Jackson, Johnny Wilkerson, Julian and Corey Boyd, Carmen Patty Wormsley, Tiffany and James Rogers, Frankie and James Knox, Fred Carter, Marlo Dandridge, Dante Smith, Joe Ford, Dr. Ernest Withers, Sammy Rainey, Aaron Skinner, Aaron James, Clifton Miller, Jeff Thompson, April McGee, Rod Cobb, Maddie Green, Mary Cobb, Reverend Patrick Bell, Steve Yamble, Ron and Ryder Walton, Lisa and Reginald Walton, Laverne and Jerry Hill, Maria Bryder, uh, Desmond Boyce, uh, James Jones, Mike Jones, Willie Jean Berrien, Terrell Baker, Jasmine Stratton, Chloe and Jasmine Stevens, Delbert Hoseman, 
Marilyn Moses, Anthony Myrick, Phyllis Wilson, Elias Wilson, Jennifer Gibson, Bertha Looney, Catherine and Charles Fox, Chelsea and Bronson Lane, Brittany Figueroa, Margaret Cole, Margaret Coleman, John Williams, Mr. and Mrs. Coulter, Larry Wilson, Benny Neal, Chief Davis and Sheriff Bonner, Mayors Young and Harris, Kim Nicholson, Mary Alice Carter, Emily B. Wright, Barbara Carter, Charlie Walton, Anthony and Tiffany Williams, uh, Desi and Diane Lane, Jadia Jasmine, and Valerie Thomas, Susan or Sharon Rogers, Donnell Hill, Stacy and Graham Bixler, Susan and Ray Brady, Deborah Bobo, Joe Proctor, Connie Hill, Regina Salonis, uh, Ronnie Wilkerson, Bradley Hill, Gary Hubbard, Charisse Lobin, Verdell and Teresa Baker, Antonio Gardner, Marshall Sanders, Sean Jackson, Crystal McGee, Robert and Glenda Party, Renee Hawkins, Jalen Dawson, Mary McKenzie and Margaret Williams, Wayne and Debbie Dozier, Angela Matthews, Terrence Brazel, James Ellis, Anita Self Jackson, and Danny Jackson, Adeline Reed, Gloria and Jennifer Hayes, Sharon Colbert, Paula Phillips, Bernard Harris, Chris Walton, Grady Henderson, George War, Albert Johnson, Will Smith, James Perry, Tim Collins, Greg Pope, Adam Bond, Andrew Jackson, the Choate family, Mardine and Essie Bailey, Sherita and Sylvia Buxton Marshall, Gloria West Williams, Glenn and Lisa Palmer, Louis Simmons, Terry Simmons, Craig, uh, George Flags Jr., and Michael James Connie Sturgis, uh, Priscilla Galloway, Alonzo, Linda, Jasmine, and Keisha Stevens, Florence Guy, Trudy Rogers, Valerie Johnson, Dan Marinese, Richard Shields, Jackie White, Jivin Jones, Louis Beasley, Stanley Dandridge, Cedric Lawson, O.C. Collins Jr. in the Bethlehem Baptist Church, Ellen Davis, Glenda Davis, Cynthia Johnson, Miles Bowens, Charles Myro, Wayne Petrie, uh, William, Eric, and Doug Baskin, Don Baskin, Tony Taylor, T.C. and Melvin Parson, Stephanie Strada, Lois Strada, Hazel Hargrove, Brittany Taylor, Carl Jackson, Cordell Jones, Sonny Hicks, Redonna Sykes, Marvin Cowens, Deborah and Willie Cole, Benjamin and Edna Taylor, R.T. Jones, Freeman and Lily Edmonds, Reggie Simmons, Amos Williams, T.J. Wilburn, Rose Taylor, Jimmy Sweet, Linda Pate, the Cook, Mace, Wright, Brown, and Mitchell families, Bill Mitchell, Curtis Timms, Paul and Francine Shivers, Mike Jones, uh, Gina Higgins, Emma Farris, Jeremy Joy, Dave Manley, Jesse Chapman, uh, Charles uh, Montreal Winfrey, Beatrice Moss, Donald Hunt, Josephine Marshall, Jamie Stevens, Philip and Sherry Underwood, Cecilia Cole, Willie Frank Wilson, Cynthia Johnson, John Brown, Rhonda Cook, A.J. Lumpkin, Pearl Harris, Kimberly Watts, Bernice Burton, Essie Jones, Annie Rice, Darnell and Denise Yancey, Patricia, Sandra and Viola Wright, Lily G. Morgan, Florence Jefferson, Francis Wright Moore, Ty and Hillary Rogers, Chris Bridges, Mary Ann Clay, Mabel Cecil, Mabel Pleasure, uh, Jackie Parson, Jackie Baker, Cherie Yancey, Edna Martin, Edna Maxwell, Elijah and Carolyn Brooks, Donald and Lucille Landry, Irene Wiggs, Sierra Glass, uh, Maddie Campbell, Myra Felix, Catherine Winfrey, Peggy Davis, Kim Rogers, Netta Thomas and the Thomas family, Ron and Ruby Dawson, Michael Guyton, Mike Armstrong, Joanne Carpenter, Willie Carpenter, Josiah Baxter, Willie Steen Brown, Frank Thomas Jr., Gwen Brownlee, Richard Williams, Tampa Gardner, Kaylin Miller, Tiffany Thornton, Eric Johnson, Robert Johnson Jr., Burnell Morgan, Harry James, and Javier Mills. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I wonder if you join with our choir as they lead us in songs of praises unto our God. Thank you. 
I mean, thank God for the blood. Had it not been for the blood, it was the blood. That precious blood.
that made the difference at Calvary. It was the blood that precious blood that my Savior did shed for me. I thank God for the blood that came streaming down for me. It was the blood that made the difference at Calvary. Now here's my story. Since I've been washed in Jesus' blood, all my sins are gone away. No one but Jesus. Could ever pay for all the awful things, the awful things that came my way. No one but you, Jesus, could ever pay such a sacrifice. A sacrifice just for me. It was the blood that made the difference at Calvary. Can we do that again, John? In Jesus' blood, all my sins are gone away. No more stay. I just ain't the same.
podobno Just for me, it was a blood that made the difference. Stay by the bed. It was a blood that made the difference. Do you hear what I'm saying? It was the blood. That made the difference. One more time. It was, it was the love that made the difference at Calvary. At Calvary. was the blood that made the difference on Calvary. Our first reading is coming from Matthew 26, verses 17 through 19. Matthew 26, verses 17 through 19. When you get it, say amen. amen. Bless you. <laughs> uh, now, this is coming from the King James Version. Now, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where will will thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said unto them, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Good morning, White Stone family. I will be reading from the First Corinthians, eleven chapter, twenty-third through twenty-nine verse. Say, Amen, when you have it. For I have received of the Lord which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this doing remembrance of me. After the same manner, 
Also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. And I discern the Lord's body. Amen. 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 Let us bow our heads for a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you for last night's sleep and slumber. And through your grace and mercy, you watched over us last night while we slept and caused us to rise up and start out another day. Thank you for lying down, our rising up, my going out, my coming in safely, day after day and time and time again. Now, dear Master, uh, in the name of Jesus, forgive us of our sins, whether in thought or in actions, as we prepare the Passover meal. In Jesus' name, we give thanks of all things. Amen. Amen.
How many know we serve a great God? You ought to tell him this morning. Don't let it be your last time like this. Deep on the cross. Give him his praise. Because he's a great God. Is our 
Let all believers in Christ say amen again. God bless all of you and God's blessing upon all of us. And I certainly have been uplifted by the songs this morning. I knew what you were going to sing, but you sang them with a special season. And uh, God bless you. Brother Baskin and Brother Lindsay, thank you for the devotional period today. And Brother Baskin, thank you for constantly trying to see that we move forward. And uh, he's made assignments for the rest of the day and the rest of uh, this spring. God bless you today. And thank you all for your splendid spirit of cooperation. Brother Brian Hawkins, thank you for the Sunday School Review this morning. And uh, your favorite brother-in-law, he assisted you. God bless you. Brother Wright. And Sister Sherry Wright is here. Miss Wright. Uh, would you like to stand and say anything? Let's see what she has to say. God bless you, Ms. Wright. God bless you. I'm going to say this also that uh, if I don't say it, uh, she might be mad at me, Ms. Trudy Rogers. Uh, is in the hospital this morning, but she's okay, but she needs to, in her words, I'm quoting her, she needs to take care of herself better, because she's always busy doing something for somebody. She gets on that phone and that computer, and she gets stuff done. And Sister Florence Guy was dressed to come, but she had to run off a little piece for somebody uh, this morning, and Brother Wilson, Brother Willie Frank Wilson, who was in Sunday school, Brother Wilson is came this morning, was not feeling very well, and so his daughter and grandson came and picked him up, and Miss Edna and the rest of you, thank you for assisting them in that. Amen. It was hard to get him to go home, but uh, once his daughter got there and, and straightened him out, he <laughs> left. And uh, it's hard, and you can understand, he wants to always, he's somewhere every day, all through the day, somewhere. He and Miss Guy, they're always somewhere. And it's hard to tell them not to because there's so many people who can do and are lazy. And they are not lazy. And we appreciate what they do. And also, uh, Brother Preston Simmons, uh, Miss Ruby Brider's brother, and his wife, Miss Simmons, would you all stand? And I just want to make mention of something. We'll talk after worship. But Miss Brider's grandson, Mark Hale, passed away this week, and Diana's son, and we'll talk about it after worship, Brother Simmons, 
And so Ms. Bride is not well herself, so uh, just want you to remember the Bride of family in every way you possibly can. And also uh, the Boyd family, remember them in prayer. That was a part of uh, the Southern Mail Corps. Brother Underwood was on the program yesterday, and Brother Cole knew him very well, and he used to come here as he aged. Also, uh, remember the Eddings family and uh, also the Carter and Hunt family. Uh, my mother-in-law, Miss Wright's uh, last aunt passed away on yesterday. I mean, not yesterday, but was funeralized on yesterday. And then Brother Baskin's uh, last brother was funeralized on yesterday in Winona, Mississippi. Brother Henry Baskin, you've heard his name called many times. So remember the Bride of Baskin, Edding, Carter, and Hunt families, and be mindful of the HIV, RSV, flu, and COVID issues. I know for some uh, that may not touch you, but it touch, it's touching a lot of folk and people who work in healthcare, they know it's a serious issue, and people with funeral homes, uh, they know it's a serious issue. And remember Brother Charles Dawson Sr., pray for him, uh, God bless him and the Dawson family as well. Amen. And uh, next Sunday is Easter Sunday. The children will present an Easter program at uh, 10 a.m. next Sunday. And Brother Walton, just raise your hand, Brother Walton. Brother Walton, of course, is the first cousin of uh, Brother Lindsay, who works with Brother Baskin on the fourth Sunday. And he would love to assist you in the purchase of your next vehicle. Uh, Brother Lane can attest to the fact that he takes care of you. So... Uh, he has a GMC from him, and it was serviced on last Friday. And uh, so he feels good about it, although he doesn't need the air conditioning yesterday and today, but is ready to go. Also, uh, thank you for those of you who uh, faithfully give tithe and offering. And if you do not want to go to the office, you can give it to one of the ushers or drop it in this basket up here on your way out. But just see one of the ushers or see one of the deacons or trustees anytime that you come or take it directly to the office. And I want to thank all of you, uh, not only Whitestone members who are in the building right now, but to those who in California or Florida, up in Michigan and Arizona and Texas and Louisiana and other places, you constantly support this congregation with your tithe and offering and generous offerings and extra gifts. Um, And before I go further with these two things, uh, do we have any other members besides the Simmons? Now, I count them as a member of this congregation. Do we have any other persons that are visiting with us and you'd like to stand and say hello to us, just wherever you are? God bless you. Let the church say amen. Okay, uh, Ms. Dolores Rose, the last living sister of Deacon Thomas Yancey. Uh, sent a very generous donation on yesterday, and I won't read the whole thing, but she says, enclosed is a devotion in memory of Thomas and Rubenstein Yancey and Joanne Barnes, the other sister. Love, Dolores Rose. And uh, that is really nice. Uh, Ms. Haynes, could you take care of this, please? Thank you. And uh, also, Brother Ron Hobbs, you know who, the Hobbs family, uh, funeralized their mother recently. He sent a very generous donation, and I won't read the whole thing, but they want you to know how thankful, how grateful they are for how you treated them in the loss of their mother and loved one. And of course, Ms. Hobb, that was her sister, and all of them say hello, and God bless you, and happy Easter to all of you. And uh, hand that to you. And um, the only other thing I'd like to mention is that uh, there will be a brief choir rehearsal right up here. Ms. President, God bless you. I, well, God bless you. <laughs> I do want to say this. We want to thank our ushers from Ms. Back on to Ms. Smith. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. And thanks to Ms. Hayes and Ms. Yancey and Brother Hunt in the office, Amen. even when they're not physically present, they have already taken care of their work. 
Missionary Cash, God bless you. Brother John Hunt Cooper, he was really playing that piano. And Brother Silas and Brother Brooks, God bless you. And uh, young people, those of you in school, whether you're in college or down in elementary or preschool or high school or middle school, whatever you want to call it, get your work. Get your work. Don't worry about who the mayor is or who the superintendent is. Get your work. If you have problems getting your work or you don't understand it, let the teacher know, let your parents know, or let me know, let granny know or big papa, let somebody know I'm having trouble getting my work. Because the education, the success that you have or failure rests solely on your shoulders. And those of you who know what I'm talking about, you know I'm right about it. Um, to our directresses as well, Ms. Thomas and Ms. Hawkins, God bless you. And uh, I want to thank all of you. I think I've covered everything I need to cover. And at this time, I'd like to call your attention. Oh, the invitation. Thank you, Brother Baskin. The invitation to church membership, candidate for baptism, restoration, or you may present a letter. Ms. Jeanette Hunt is coming forward to stand here with us. And whatever you sing is fine. And we extend the invitation that has been extended from God through Christ by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. If you can believe in your heart what we sing and what we preach and what we teach about the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ, all of this was done that our souls might be saved, prepared to go to heaven when this life is over. Is there one? Is there one? For those of you who are tuned in live on Facebook, including the Bailey, Sturges, and Strauder families, go to someone's congregation, call someone a right white stone. Let somebody know that I want my soul saved. I want to be a part. I want to rededicate my life to Christ through some congregation, whether it's a Presbyterian, a Methodist, or Catholic congregation. You may be seated. to call your attention to the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 15. The gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 15. And let me read this aloud for your hearing. Verses 15 and then 24 and 25. And I'll read the 15th chapter of Mark. Verses 15 and then 24 and 25. I'll read that from the New Revised Standard Version. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas, or Barabbas, for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. And then verse 24 and 25 of that same chapter of Mark. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. Let us, would you repeat after me our theme or subject for the next few minutes if it be possible? Jesus experienced brutal punishment. Jesus experienced brutal punishment. God bless you. Let us pray. Almighty God, in the name of Christ Jesus, our risen Savior, 
by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. May we feast on your word. May we see Palm Sunday celebration, and may we see the Easter celebration beyond what the world celebrates. It's in Jesus' name that we ask for forgiveness of our sins, and we ask for strength and wisdom and a discerning spirit that we might be better disciples, begging and urging those who have not yet accepted your plan of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ, to step out on faith in him. In his name we pray, amen. Elder Fanoid Harris, there in California. Reverend Johnson is not feeling well enough to be here today, but he's tuned in. Reverend War is present. Reverend Smith, of course, is present. And Reverend Chris Walton is in the process of transitioning to become the next pastor of First Baptist Lauderdale. Reverend Henderson, he's tuned in. He's just not here. And Pastor Stanley Dandridge, who's the pastor of Unity, but is a member of Whitestone. And he uh, drops his contributions off uh, to this congregation. And he says best wishes to you. And he hopes that you'll have a happy Easter. And again, uh, Brother Melvin Parson and Brother Benjamin and Edna Taylor. Uh, God bless you. Uh, Brother Melvin Parson is tuning in. Brother Ben is tuning in along with Miss Edna and Brother Charles Dawson Sr. and Brother Charles Dawson Jr. They are tuning in again to Deacons Jackson, Stevens, Moore, uh, Perry, Don Baskin, Sims, Knox, Sanders, Bailey, and Sturgis, and Strauders, in addition to our deacons who are here in the building right now and those who like Brother Lindsay's out watching our vehicles. Again, to all of you that are present, those of you who are tuned in live on Facebook or YouTube, whether you're in Michigan or in Vicksburg or in Baton Rouge or Dallas or Philadelphia or Chicago or down in Waco where Dr. Adam Bond is, Young and old, it doesn't matter. Black or white, brown or red, regardless of our faith traditions. There's an old favorite hymn called, Were You There? It asks a question, were you there? It is believed that this hymn, Missionary Cash comes from the rich American spiritual tradition probably developed in the early 1800s by African American slaves. For those who slaves, slaves had no value, they had value. And for those who say that what they did serves no purpose, they are mistaken. God has a way of using everybody and everything to get his message across. As in most spirituals, the words are simple, sieging on one central theme or concept. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? And you and I collectively might ask the question, were we there when they crucified our Lord? Were you there when they crucified our Lord? Because he is all of our Lords. He's yours and he's mine. If you're black, he's yours, and if, he's, if you're white, he's yours. If you're Japanese, he's yours. If you're Chinese, he's yours. If you're 10 years old, he's yours. If you're 100 years old, he's yours. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Perhaps whenever you... And I read the account of the crucifixion of Christ. That's what our Sunday school lesson this week is centered on, the crucifixion of Christ. We might just tremble at the idea of the crucifixion of a human of flesh and blood. Jesus was both man and he was God. He was a spiritual and he was flesh and blood. God can work through anything and anybody to get his message home. Yeah. If the, 
question is, how do we respond to what God is saying? The man that ordained me, who was um, worked for Dr. King, Reverend Pledge, used to always say, God is always talking to us. All right, all right. He talks to us night and day. Yeah. You open his word, he's talking. You hear somebody preaching or singing, he's talking to us. Yeah, yeah. No matter how bad the situation or event is in life, God is always talking to us. He's always trying to get our attention like the burning bush that Moses stumbled upon. He's always trying to get our attention. We don't always listen because Satan sometimes has a stronger voice in the present. Christ, the Son of God, experienced, or you might choose to use endured, brutal punishment. For our sins. April 19th, 2014, Frank Turex published an article on crossexamine.org and was dealing with the brutal punishment of Christ's crucifixion. Perhaps we don't spend enough time thinking about that ordeal on Calvary. It was mean. It was low down. In the words of Miss Mamie Davis, they were dirty and low down. All he tried to do was feed the hungry, give sight to the blinded, heal people with withered hands, turn water into wine so the wedding feast could be merry, brought a man back from the dead, and yet they were dirty and low down too. You ask the question, Turex does, what was the crucifixion like? What was it like? Now, we think we have some pain, suffering, fly biters or mosquito biters, and we sometimes say, oh, God, or do we say, oh, gosh? He also dealt with another question. What was the extent of the physical suffering Jesus endured or experienced at the crucifixion at Calvary from the cross. Now, let's think about the, the pain and the suffering and the frustration and the evil that entrenched on his body before he even got to Calvary. Uh, Turek said, consider that the English word excruciating, just the pronunciation of that word excruciating, it's just like rubbing your flesh against brick. It's just like rubbing your skin against concrete. Uh, excruciating is from the Latin meaning out of the crucifixion. The crucifixion, crucifixion itself sounds tough. The word crucifixion should put in our minds that it was tough. It was mean. It was the highest order of infliction, afflicting pain on somebody. Yeah. Added to Rex, I found that the best way to comprehend, he said, the magnitude of Christ's physical suffering on Good Friday is to read the following description that he said we've adapted from the work of a medical doctor called Dr. C. Truman Davis. Matter of fact, this, this account was illustrated in a short video, and I don't have that video presentation, but I do have the presentation as it was made oral in the showing at the medical schools. Uh, see, in other words, there was some physical, that's physical suffering that goes into the crucifixion. Again, Christ was both man and God. It was his flesh and blood, it was that human flesh that he had to endure and experience, not for himself, but for us. And uh, Dr. Davis said the whip the Roman soldiers used on Christ had small iron balls and sharp pieces of sheep bones tied to it. Jesus was stripped of his clothing. His hands were tied to an upright post. 
Now, keep in mind, they already had him. And there were at least 100 soldiers around him with spears. And yet they tied his hands. You have to ask, what were they afraid of? They had him lock, stock, and barrel. And then his back, they took this whip, stripped his clothing, and his hands were tied to this upright post. His back, or rein, or buttocks, or and legs were whipped either by one soldier or by two, whoever alternate in alternated positions. In other words, as I explained Wednesday in the class, uh, they, the soldiers took turns. It was just like in a basketball game, you call a guy in to spell this guy for a few minutes. This soldier would beat him, beat him, beat him. Come on, next, beat him. But Jesus never had a chance to catch his breath. And can you imagine his hands are tied and they had already whipped him and his wound, his blood was coming down his body and sweat, and yet they didn't give him a break. They, he couldn't even say time out. And so a first soldier would come in and beat and beat and beat. Another soldier would come in and beat, beat, while the other one take a break. All of this brutal punishment for you and me. Yet most of us only want to talk about the resurrection in April or March. We ought to at least talk about Christ every day. Every Sunday ought to be a day of resurrection. The soldiers taunted him. It's not enough to beat him and beat him and beat him. They laughed at him and talked about him. And as they repeatedly struck his back with full force, the iron balls caused deep contusions. You medical people know what I'm talking about. Deep contusions and the sheep bones cut into his skin and tissues. As the whipping continued, the lacerations tore into his muscles and caused his flesh to bleed even more. They weren't satisfied with him just bleeding, they wanted to really humiliate him. And they did it in front of the people, the public, the same folk that he had come down to save. They did it in front of his mother, his brothers. They wanted to shame him. Turex also said pain and blood loss set the stage for even greater human shock. Keep in mind, uh, this is how a medical doctor described Christ's fruit of crucifixion. Quickly, when Jesus was almost dead, the soldiers stopped the beating. And perhaps, I don't know that to be a fact, but perhaps they went, and he was not moving. And they probably said, hold up. By now, Jesus had half fainted. His hands were still tied. And so some soldier, perhaps with a little compassion, said, untie his hands. He can't do anything now. We've beaten him. We've beaten him to a pulp, allowing him to fall to the stone pavement, slumped over. You can only imagine, using your spiritual imagination, he slumped over on the pavement. He was wet with his own soggy blood. These soldiers saw Jesus as some kind of joke or some kind of object to be laughed at. Uh, well, he's supposed to be the king of the Jews. Let him save himself. He's supposed to be able to perform miracles. Let him save himself. The soldiers threw a robe across Christ's shoulders, making fun of him, mocking him. You know they didn't want to recognize him as a king. When they say king of kings, they would make fun of him. It's just like in the 21st century. You'll hear people, you walk in a store, and they know who you are. Oh, we can't say anything now. The preacher man is in here. Walk in the service, day and then, well, we can't say anything now. The preacher man is in here. What's up, Reb? They don't mean that in a positive way. What they're saying, get, get out of here. you in our way. We can't have any fun because you in here. A small bundle of flexible branches covered with long thorns were plaited into a crown. And those of you who pick roses on a thorn bush or have picked blackberries like I have, you know it's hard not to get some thorns on you. 
So they put all the stuff together and put it on his head. Said, now you're king. They also took a stick and hit him across the face. And then in his head with the crown of thorns on his head, and then you take the stick and you multiply the pressure. And Christ's crucifixion was downright humiliating and very shameful. Even for a hardcore criminal, that was shameful. Christ's crucifixion was brutal, and, his, and this punishment was more than cruel. The word brutal itself says there's nothing good about being brutalized. Turek said the robe had already become full of clots of blood. You can imagine his robe, the robe they threw on him, all this blood and this meat hanging from his body was now on this robe, and probably nobody wanted to touch it. And the blood, the blood clots of blood and serum of the wounds and its removal just uh, in the careless removal of surgical bandage caused excruciating pain. You know how you have bandages on, and then when you pull it off, it hurts. Am I right about it? Uh, you have a cut on the leg, and then you have to take it off, pull it off. It hurts. I know I'm right about it because I've experienced it, and you've experienced it. And almost as though they wanted to whip him again, the wounds again began bleeding. In spite of this, Christ was made to carry his own cross. You know, they beat him to a pulp. He's laying down. The man barely can pick up his hand, couldn't even lift himself up. And yet they say he's going to carry this cross. You know, when the devil get after you, he piles on the pressure. He piles it on. And in his efforts to walk erect, perhaps, probably as he was getting him up, he probably tried to straighten up, and he wobbled. The weight of the heavy wooden cross together with the shock produced by the copious blood loss. In other words, that word copious, he lost a lot of blood. Most of his blood probably was gone. If you checked his blood pressure, it was probably at an all-time low and it was too much for him. That was the God part of him now. But what was keeping him going was the spirit part of him. And then the other thing that kept him going was us. He said, if I don't do it, what will happen to them? Jesus stumbled and fell. The rough wood of the beam of the cross cut into his skin and muscles of the shoulders. I hope I'm not spoiling some of your appetites, but we need to hear this. At this point, we know that a strong North African man called Simon of Cyrene helped Jesus with his cross. He didn't have a choice. He said, get in that boy and help him with that cross. Keep in mind, Jesus was following along, bleeding and sweating in the cold. It was kind of chilly at that time of year, sort of like it was this morning and yesterday. And now at this point, Jesus was being crucified. In my understanding, they'd already crucified him, but that was not enough. And as Jesus slowly sags down with more weight on the nails in his wrist, now he's trying to walk, nails in his feet, chains around his ankle and his hands. You're talking about excruciating pain. And the pain was just shooting up through his whole body, shooting through his fingers and up his arms to explode in his brain. The nails in his wrist were putting pressure on every nerve in his body. Uh, can you imagine? I've stepped on a nail before when I was about six. And the whole body is out of commission. If you ever stuck something in your hand, you can't remain the same. And you'll say, Lord, have mercy. If you're a Christian, What's in you coming out? His feet were nailed and so were his hands. At this point, something else happened. His arms fatigued, Turek said, meaning they grew tired. Uh, you ever had somebody say, hold up your hands, hold them up, keep them up, keep them up. You can only hold them up so long, am I right? And something else happened. His arms fatigued, great waves of cramps. Swept over his muscles. Now, you know what happens when you have a cramp. Most Sundays, I pray, that I don't have one of those cramps up here. My wife knows when I have a cramp, I got to lay down. 
real quick. I think Brother Reggie has seen me have a cramp before, and I have to lay down. I mean, you don't have to. You're going to lay down. <laughs> How many of you had some cramps? And I used to have them worse when I was a teenager because I didn't drink enough water and always running, and those cramps would get you. You see a football game, and a guy falls out, you think he's been really hurt. He's hurt all right. That cramp has him. Yeah. And if that cramp hits you in the back of the thigh, you're going to go somewhere and lay down. Y'all know what I'm talking about. What well, Jesus had cramps swept across his muscles, knowing them, uh, knotting them in deep, relentless, throbbing pain. With these cramps came the inability to push himself upward. Hanging by his arms, the muscles were paralyzed. And the intercoastal muscles were unable to act. In other words, every muscle in his body was messed up. Air can be drawn into his lungs, but he couldn't exhale. So Rex goes on to say, Jesus was simply trying to catch one short breath. By this time, Christ's body was dehydrated. Nobody had offered him a drink of water. Nobody had offered him any Kool-Aid or any Gatorade. Nobody had said, are you all right? Uh, can we do something? Because they didn't mean, they wanted to be, that's why it was brutal. They didn't even offer him a drink of water. That's the devil at work. Finally, Jesus could allow his body to die. Notice, he allowed his body to die. Uh, somebody just read that, I heard this morning, I said, uh, you know, we like to sing these songs, they killed him. They killed my Lord. No, they didn't kill him. He decided after the work was finished that he would lay down and die. With one last surge of strength, Jesus once again pressed his torn feet against the nail. Any movement with the nail in your feet, any movement. The pain grows greater. And he straightened his legs best he could and took a deep, a deeper breath and uttered the seventh and last cry, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And what he was saying, Daddy, I'm finished. I've done everything you told me to do. Oh, it's been rough down here, but I've done everything you told me to do. And I can imagine, he said, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You've seen me through, and we think we're suffering. But nobody, nothing ever suffered like Jesus did. Brutal punishment for your sins and my sins. Friends, regardless of age, gender, race, or political affiliation, Christ experienced so much brutal punishment, all for the salvation of our souls. Today we can be saved from our sins by telling God in the name of Christ, I commit my life to you. If you have not, why not do it today? Easter time is an excellent time to give your life to Christ. You see, you don't really get anywhere with God celebrating Easter only at Easter time. Uh, you can buy all the gifts you want and baskets and rabbits and all that for the kids you want, but if you're not really loving Christ during the year, and then we wonder why so much stuff is going on because we are disrespecting. Christ. And if you don't respect God, who sees all things and is everywhere at all times, you can imagine they're not thinking about you and me. They'll ask you now what you're looking at. It's like a lady told me once, and I'll be finished. I was about 22. I, I was just here in Memphis, new, and, you know, I was like 22 years old, and going all around selling insurance and meeting everybody, sticking my hand out, say, young man, if you were in Chicago where my brother is, you wouldn't be running around here smiling and shaking hands like you're doing. You're getting away with a lot down here. He said, my brother went up there doing the same thing in Chicago back in the 50s, and he had put on some diamond rings. He had won a lot of money from doing whatever he was doing. And the man told him, says, I want those rings. And the man said, well, I can't give you these. He said, you got one choice. Give me the rings, I'm going to take the hand. 
and he resisted and they took the hand. That's pain. That's mean. They were mean. The Jewish rulers, the church leaders were mean to Jesus. The Roman soldiers were mean. But that was one, a centurion, who heard all of this, saw this, and yet Jesus never fought back. And he said, surely this man was a righteous man. If we in 2024 don't believe that, Brother Brian Hawkins said that this morning in his review, saying that if we don't believe in Christ, it's on us. Let us prepare for the Lord's Supper. And thank you for your time. I want to thank Brother Jerry Wright and Deacon Lane. For the benefit of the people who are tuned in on Facebook and YouTube, let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for this day. Thank you for what Christ did for us at Calvary. Thank you for his willingness to take the brutal punishment for our sins. We thank you, Lord, for loving us, and we thank you for the grace extended to us. And we want to, in faith, remember his death by eating his body and drinking his blood. Bless our willingness to be obedient. Bless our spirit of cooperation and obedience. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank <laughs> you. 